Good evening. The state television company of Western Armenia represents the most important events of these days. Today is broadcast. Artsakh is Armenia and that's it. Editorial. 50 new cases of coronavirus registered in Armenia. Who is Damod Parid Pasha? Ahead of April 24, the Genocide Against Armenians Memorial Center presents a new online exhibition. Interest in bread baked in tonnage increased in Western Armenia. Following statements by the Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sergei Lavrov, the real politic returns to the territorial question of Artsakh and its border with Azerbaijan. It is worth recalling that in 1990, Azerbaijan made the decision to ethnically cleanse the Armenian population of Artsakh and to return the borders of the Batum Treaty signed by Armenia on June 4, 1918. It is worth remembering that the Armenian population among its best representatives decided to resist the Azerbaijani army to prevent its destruction and confuse the entire Azerbaijani military apparatus, thus exercising its right to self-determination. After the ceasefire agreement signed by Azerbaijan on May 12, 1994, its army killed hundreds of young Armenian soldiers who were assigned to defend the dividing line. The question remains and will remain entirely legal. To the resolutions of the United Nations, the principles of Madrid or the Kazan Protocol have more legal weight than the conditions of the Treaty of Cyrus and the right to self-determination of the Armenian people. It was April 1920 and during the San Remo conference we were dealing with the Karabakh issue. In conclusion, the main allied forces declared that Karabakh is an integral part of Armenian state of 1920 in the territory of Western Armenia and was even de facto recognized then the jure on May 11, 1920. All this appears within the Article 92 of the Treaty of Cyrus. Article 92. The frontiers between Armenia and Azerbaijan and Georgia respectively will be determined by the direct agreement between the states concerned. If in either case the states concerned have failed to determine the frontier by agreement at the date of the decision referred to in Article 89, the frontier line in question will be determined by the principal allied powers, who will also provide its being traced on the spot. You can find the whole article on our website. As of Thursday 11 a.m., a total of 50 new cases of the new coronavirus were recorded in Armenia, the National Center for Disease Control and Prevention reports. Overall, 1,523 cases are confirmed. As many as 659 people have recovered. Some 840 active cases are known to be under treatment at present. A total of 50,960 citizens have been tested ever since and 24 people have died from coronavirus complications since the outbreak began in Armenia. Damad Mehmet Adil Ferit Pasha, known simply as Damad Ferit Pasha, was an Ottoman statesman who held the office of Grand Vizier during two periods, the first time between March 4 and October 2, 1919, and the second time between April 5 and October 21, 1920. He was one of the founding members of the Freedom and Accord Party in 1911, favoring liberalism and more regional autonomy within the empire, in opposition to the Committee of Union and Progress. On June 11, 1919, Damat Ferit Pasha officially confessed the massacres against Armenians and was a key figure and initiator of the war crime trials to condemn the death to the heads of the Armenian, Greek and the Syrian genocide. Along with four other notables, he agreed to sign the Treaty of Sarai, which caused an uproar of reaction by Kamalis towards him. He retorted by becoming increasingly hostile to the new nationalist movement led by Mustafa Kemal Pasha, which was centered in Ankara. Damat Ferit Pasha began to collaborate with the Allied occupation forces. In 1922, he fled to Europe where he died in Nice, France on October 6, 1923. He was buried in the city of Sidon, Lebanon. As one of the signatories of the Treaty of Service on behalf of the Ottoman Empire, he ordered the destruction of the containers of ammunition kept in Ottoman military warehouses in Constantinople, in line with the instructions of the British. Genocide Against Armenia's Memorial Center is presenting a new online exhibition titled Self-Defense in Cilicia During Genocide Against Armenians. The exhibition is dedicated to the centennial of self-defense battles of Maraj, Hajan and Aintab. The temporary exhibition Self-Defense in Cilicia During the Genocide Against Armenians is bilingual and composed of 11 panels. Various episodes of the history of genocide against Armenians related to the Cilician Armenians are presented starting from their status, occupation and control contribution in the Ottoman Empire before the genocide against Armenians till their deportation and massacres, international diplomacy and the emptying of Cilicia of Armenians. Special emphasis has been put on the self-defense battles fought by the Armenians of Cilicia. 
With the announcement of a curfew and the framework of the fight against coronavirus in Western Armenia, the interest in bread baked in Tonit is gradually increasing. The tradition of baking bread in Tonit has been preserved in the life of Armenians and has reached us from ancient times. Tonits, which are commonly found in home gardens, have become more commonly used connected with the actual situation. In the region, bread baked by women in Tonit not so long ago, now in the age of technological development and urbanization, has given way to bread baked in ovens. However, with the spread of coronavirus around the world, interest in Tony bread began to grow. Now let us represent your attention a song that be one. You can find the whole version of the song in the official page of Western Armenia TV. This was all for today. Goodbye.